So hi everyone, uh, I'm Vlastimil and I'm one of the slab maintainers, but the one with the git tree, so that makes me more powerful now. And uh, uh, and actually, uh, when we were uh, drafting the call for papers or talks, Matthew put their bullet that one of the topics could be do we really need so many slab allocators? And I thought, oh, that's a good idea for a talk. So I took that one up and this is the result. And uh, actually I thought it would be a nice idea to start with uh, how, how exactly we got here. And then we, should, we can uh, wait what we can do in the future. So for that, I... Uh, even duck the history, historical git tree and uh, checked when the various files appeared. And I hope my uh, my information is accurate. I I wasn't involved in Linux back in those days. So if anyone here was, you can correct me. And if this uh, historical excursion brings you any bad memories, then I'm sorry. So the first kind of small object allocator I found was libmailoxy in very early days or months of Linux. And uh, actually the commit in the historic git tree, which I don't know who wrote, mentioned this command that it was really horrible because, because the size were not stored with the objects, so the free had to pass the size as well to free it. So there was some free as function that had to take both the address and the size. And apparently it was years of pain. If anyone here remembers that. Then uh, in 1993, there was a re-implementation in Kmaloxy, which had the size prepended as now the slope allocator does. And Probably it took still some years to get rid of the free S. And then in 1997, we had the first real slab allocator. That means it allocates classes of objects and not just uh, anonymously sized pieces of memory. And uh, the first users were actually from the memory management itself, the VM area struct, and from the networking SOC struct. And uh, it provided the wrappers for kmalloc, which were not initially used, so still using the other allocators, but a few months that, that the old one was deleted and Slab started providing the kmalloc caches as it, as it does uh, until today. And there was some further evolution of the slab allocator. So we had some cleanups, the per CPU arrays for better performance, uh, NUMA awareness, and you can already recognize some names that are, uh, they are still active. And, uh, and in 2006, uh, we got another allocator because there was some effort towards the tiny Linux for small devices. I think up to 16 megabytes of memory where the slab, uh, the one with A was the, wasn't sufficient enough because separates uh, different objects into different pages, which is good for performance, but it's not the smallest memory footprint uh, that you can get. So for these tiny devices, the slope was introduced, which again, very similar to the original allocator, which just puts everything together and performance is not the main goal. Mm. And then in 2007, we got slab 
with you. I I still don't know today how to pronounce this slap and slap. So it's uh, immediately obvious which is which. So I'm going to say the one with you or a. And uh, for the U slap, uh, the one of the motivation was that there was too much complexity in the existing slab with the A and uh, if you compare them today I would say that the U slab is more complex <laughs> so that's kind of interesting in retrospect but but it is more complex for good reasons I would say because it really has uh, more features so uh, and better performance and other motivation was that uh, Christoph Lameter didn't like the per CPU, per node, and alien caches of the existing A slab. And instead, uh, did uh, per CPU slabs, uh, the slab pages are uh, assigned to a CPU to do the per CPU caching, which is great for allocating, but because you just use the slab available to the CPU, but it doesn't always uh, work great when you are freeing objects because if they are allocated from a different slab, it doesn't help you that you have some on your CPU exclusively. You still have to work with the, 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 the slab page where the object belongs to. So, so it's not a complete win that, that there is no, there are no per CPU views or caches. Yeah, and other features or advantages is that at the time it didn't have separate um, you know, structure for, for the slab page itself. It used, it, it used the fields of struct page, which then the A slab also was later converted to use. And of course, there are the great debugging features that can be enabled on boot without recompiling. At the time, uh, in the commit log, there was said that there were no on-demand DMA game log caches, which I suppose was later uh, re-evaluated because there are now there, regardless of uh, whether you use the A slab or U slab. So, and uh, that was in 2007, in July, and already in October, the Uslab was made the default in the kconfig. This great uh, commit log saying, oh, I've heard that some people think it's already default, but it's not, so let's make it default. And that was it. And I actually even didn't find uh, uh, this message on, on the, the lore archive. So it's it might have been sent off list and merged by Andrew without anyone knowing. So that's how we uh, were uh, setting the default allocators in 2007. But it seems like some people were really unhappy about it. And uh, there were more years of discussions that focused on the detail I already mentioned that the u slab is great for many things but for some workloads the luck of the per cpu cache for freeing can really make a difference so it's not a universal thing so there were attempts to combine the best uh, features of both allocators in one way or another so for example nick pigging uh, was proposing uh, allocator that was called SLQB, which combined uh, both in some, some uh, specific way and edit, edit for, for example, the uh, per CPU cache for freeing. And what I gathered from uh, the archives is that it wasn't merged because Linux didn't want yet another slab allocator because there were already three and th this one would be fourth and you all know the 
uh, XKCD comics about how a new standard is going to replace all of the previous ones because it's better. So, because, and then it was probably discontinued. Then uh, actually Christoph Lameter tried himself to improve the use lab in a way that that makes it uh, best even for the specific use cases in networking and this had several iterations where it was called SLEB or S plus Q and uh, there was this advantage that it wasn't another new allocator but an evolution of the SLUB which would probably make it uh, okay but uh, unfortunately there were some performance regressions reported and then and then suddenly the development didn't continue uh, so probably got busy with other things but anyway the the some advantages of slub were, were reported to a slab over time like the use of struct page fields and uh, merging of KMM caches with, of same size and attributes. So they got a bit closer in, in the features, but not completely. So, so that brings us today. We still have these three allocators where the A slab is still the same one with some minor uh, minor improvements and everybody knows that if they want to do debugging of pub allocations they wouldn't use that and it doesn't make sense to implement it there as well then for the small systems we have the slob even though we haven't heard about the tiny linux effort for some years i'm not sure if Anyone still uh, uses it anywhere? I've checked the, for example, the Open VRT for for the routers. I think it uses the SLUB loop because the routers have 128 megabytes memory these days, at least, and it's uh, sufficient. So. And yes, the SLUB is the, still the default, and uh, overall the best uh, performance uh, with some exceptions. So of course, there's disadvantage of having multiple implementations because I think we've heard it in even in the MGLRU talk that they have plan to implement some new feature and have to touch all of these allocators uh, for the kmalloc and the user facing layers we need some unified layer that that also has more than thousand lines or, and there was some recent effort to uh, even improve it uh, then we have some features that are compatible with only some of the of the allocators like MC, MCG or Nissan K fans, and even then it was more work to hook uh, hook it into both of them. And preempt RT is only for uh, the use lab currently. It doesn't make sense to implement uh, the necessary changes for the ACE lab as well. And another issue is, is that uh, multiple allocators block some useful improvements. So, for example, from the XFS uh, developers, there, there was a request whether K3 would work not only on KMALOC objects, but also on objects from KMM cache alloc because they might uh, some unified freeing function that wouldn't have to care and it would be really easy for the a slab and use slab because, because uh, the kmalloc caches are same as any other cache so the k3 always can uh, look up the right cache and uh, free 
be the object even though it was allocated by KMM cache alloc from a specific cache or from KMALOC from one of the generic caches. But for the O slot, that's an issue because, because uh, K3 doesn't have the size parameter. Sorry. I just want to say um, it, it also helped for RCU because right now you can't call. You have to have a special wrapper to call KMEM cache free because you've got to pass in two pointers, whereas RCU only has space for a single pointer. But yeah, that's also kind of what I was going to ask about. What is the what is the challenge with K free and KMEM cache um, alloc? Maybe I missed that. The challenge. Yeah, why didn't it work? The, the challenge is in slope because. Uh, when, when you slop puts everything together, the objects you allocate from specific caches and the KMLO caches, but when you are freeing with KMM cache free, you pass the cache pointer, and from that it can derive the size of the object that's supposed to be freed. But for KMLO, uh, or if you call K free, you just gave it the pointer to the object. So for those, it has to prepend a header with the size so it knows how much is there to be freed. And now if we allowed doing K free on objects that are from KMM cache alloc, that means they can sometimes be freed without passing the cache pointer. So now it would have to store the size for all objects. And that goes against the idea that it should be very uh, memory saving and it's even worse because of the alignment and EMA uh, alignment uh, guarantees that we have to provide when we tried it it uh, really increased the size a lot so that brings us to the questions if we can drop one of those allocators to, to have less uh, maintenance burden and uh, and avoid these issues with the k3 and of course nobody today is suggesting that we would drop the u slot uh, because really the best default so one question is if we can drop the a slab there were some past attempts that always uh, ended up by mostly David Rientes or Google guys that they use it internally, the ACE lab, because uh, on their workload, high speed performance, uh, the lack of the peer CPU cache really makes it slower. Uh, so, could so, they uh, share more information about why why it was performing less? Like maybe we could fix the performance issue for those few test cases or what, whatever they used it for. Yeah, um, I think the, he shared at some point that it was the NetPerf uh, test and it was due to the lack of the per CPU array for freeing when you allocate on one CPU and you are freeing the object on another CPU, it's costly. Yeah, this, this actually used to be a performance problem for Oracle uh, back when, um, when I was looking at TPC, when I was still working at Intel, doing work for Oracle <laughs> um, on, on, on the TPC benchmarks, uh, we, we, we would see this problem and, and we had similar results to Google and, and this was exactly it, the, the, the networking was allocating on one core and then freeing on another. And I should mention that uh, at the 2019 thread, I was one of those that say we still are using the ACE lab because we did at that point at SUSE, but since then we switched uh, uh, switched to the use lab uh, as well because Mel Gorman, some uh, benchmarking going that showed that it wasn't uh, there wasn't any large blocker and the benefits of the debugging uh, are really useful to us 
So I guess if if we want to drop slab, we can try to raise it again and, as you said, uh, ask for very specific details on what's the issue and uh, if if it can be helped with adding some of resurrecting one of the ideas of adding the per CPU cache. So but it what... really isn't worth to have whole implementation just for a corner case. So one thing here, uh, so many other subsystems like IOU ring and even networking now start having, uh, like creating their own cache in front of Slab Allocator. So it might be like that, again, first question is like, uh, what should we do about that, uh, the Slab? And the second is more on the, like the performance issue might have been resolved. I think they might have to just like rerun those things, uh, uh, this TCP or the networking. But I, I think more on the, the previous one I have like for the, from the slab uh, allocated maintainer, because the other subsystems kind of bypassing or like creating their own caches. Uh, so do, do you mean uh, mempools or literally writing your, uh, so uh, IO ring has per CPU cache for its specific objects. Similarly, the SKBs uh, and SKB head uh, in the networking have their own per CPU cache. So, yeah. So maybe it would be worth to generalize this and make it part of the allocator and yeah. maybe opt in so it's not for all caches because for others it would be a waste of memory. Yeah, I kind of want one myself. That's why I'm asking. And, and it sounds like we're all having the same sort of issue. I don't really feel like uh, the right place to be doing this is outside the, the slab or slab allocator. The slab fast, the allocation fast path is really fast. It's a slick piece of work. Uh, it's just a, a non lock double word comp exchange. It doesn't disable preemption or anything. Uh, it sounds like maybe the issue is in the, the, the freeing path using those per CPU free list, but maybe we could make it configurable like per KMM cache, whether we did a fast path that was more suitable for say IOU ring so that we weren't duplicating this over, all over the place. Yeah, right. Well, so my problem specifically is, is that I, I can't fail certain times and I don't know how many things I need. Uh, well, I, I, so I calculate them and then I have to pre-allocate before I call, whereas I, if, if I had something, yeah, mempools, I've been, I've been looking at that, but I, I don't know if it fully fits for other reasons. That's why I was wondering about the other options that, well. So, 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 so the, I, the, there are actually different reasons why different people are doing these pre-allocations and they're doing it outside the slub and it's because they know things that SLUB doesn't. For example, um, SKBs, they're, they're being mapped to particular devices. And so it's not just a per, um, it's not just per CPU or, or anything, it, it's, it's per DMA device. And so they don't have to go back to the DMA mapping layer each time. And that's not really something information we want to turn in, give to the SLUB allocator, because that's a real layering violation. Oh, I mean, we already have separate KMM caches. Perhaps we could have a cash per DMA device. Actually, I hope we can get rid of Kim. Maybe. I, I, we, we just need to have all the information. We can't just go around saying, oh, everyone's put a layer in front of it. We should, we should move all that into the slab allocator. It's like, no, you've really got to understand the problem these people yeah. are solving. And I think IOU is probably the same thing with a different DMA device. I think that's what's going on with IOU, okay. but I'm not really sure. We should, we should go and ask um, yeah. Jens because yeah. he's actually here. So. Yeah. Hey, it's lunchtime, everyone. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay.